Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Today I want to talk about The Expanse because obviously we're crazy about this show. Not only is it just really well done, it's also a terrific show for someone who watches maybe too much science fiction and is kind of tired of all the same tropes and errors in the science. Now the science in The Expanse is pretty damn good for a sci-fi TV show and it doesn't really distract from a very interesting world that in many ways mirrors our own. It's actually the type of TV show that makes the audience question what will humanity's pathway to the future actually look like. I wish more world leaders watched The Expands, then maybe they would be less reactionary and have more plans for the future. Now, we've talked about how The Expanse does an excellent job at portraying battles in space. Today I want to take a look at the more rare infantry ground battles and CQC. Even though in The Expanse most battles are fought at range with nukes, missiles, and railguns, sometimes you still gotta get your hands dirty and send in a few jarheads. Or just Bobby Draper, who actually has filed a restraining order against our own American Ben, who has been sending her, objectively, pretty passable poetry that's paired with nice music. You guys should check out his last video. It's, it's a batter. The Martian Marine Corps represents the best of the best of the best on the Red Planet. Like the UN Marines, they are equipped in powered vacuum rated armor that can do some pretty incredible things. The Martian Recon Marines use the Goliath Mark III and Mark IV power armor, which is not only protecting individuals from the dangers of vacuum and protomolecules, but also from most small arms fire, shrapnel, and even life-threatening explosions and blast waves. Now, we already have the technology and material science to create a suit that looks like this and probably functions in many ways like this, but there is one part of the puzzle that they have solved in the expanse that we have not. And that is finding a power source that is very efficient and high power to weight ratio. Lithium ion batteries are basically the go-to nowadays and they're just too damn heavy and not powerful enough for exoskeletons, which is why most military forces are looking for lighter exoskeletons that aren't powered or have limited power they're basically waiting for the next battery to arrive, as is many other industries. Not only has humanity in the future solved this whole battery issue, Martian Marines and also Earth Marines generally fight in zero gravity or limited gravity, which means a lot less energy is actually necessary for movement. We're not sure how much a Martian Marine weighs, but let's say here on Earth that suit is 400 pounds, and on Mars, where there is only one third gravity, that weight goes down to just 133 pounds, which makes me think that there's probably a uh, low power mode that's more battery efficient for when you're in minimum gravity or zero gravity. Now, if you're using the power settings at high, then you can also perform some pretty spectacular moves on a low G battlefield. There also seems to be less of an emphasis on taking cover when they're wearing these forced recon marine suits, which are pretty overpowered, but I don't know how realistic that would be. I think I'd still take cover even if I was wearing an exoskeleton. It should also be mentioned that the Force Recon Marines of the Martian Navy, like the ones we have here in the States, are the very few and very proud. The standard Martian Marine uses Martian light armor, which honestly looks more like motocross armor with some shoulder pauldrons. These lighter armor suits still protected an individual from vacuum and also projectiles. It does make economic sense to have a less intense suit that doesn't need to be fully powered. The Martian light armor, like the heavier suits, had thrusters on them, which allowed for increased mobility in zero gravity. Because the worst thing that can happen to a marine in the middle of a firefight is for them to gently float out of cover. Having a power suit or power source on your suit also gives the average marine in the expanse access to a heads-up display and sensors, along with a risk computer which further enhances the abilities of the average grunt. One of the best force multipliers that you can have is making sure that your men don't get lost while they're on the way to whatever mission they're doing. So communication is actually very important here. While combat ranges continue to increase in naval and aerial combat here on Earth, the average engagement range of an infantry soldier has not changed much in the last century. Terminally, the location of a battle dictates the range of the battle more than the type of weapons or technology being used. Military operation in urban terrain will have a lot more CQC-style firefights, while battles in more rural areas will be fought at longer ranges, perhaps even longer than the effective firing range for most standard small arms. With the development of these high-tech exoskeletons, not only are Space Marines able to have more protection, they can also now carry a lot more weight in munitions, supplies, and weapons. 
As a matter of fact, the main purpose of implementing prototype exoskeletons into military forces today here on Earth is to decrease the amount of energy a soldier has to use while carrying a rucksack that weighs up to 100 pounds or one Kevin Hart sized parcel. Hashtag rock and heart for president 2020. And so when Marines enter combat wearing exoskeletons, they also have access to a variety of miniaturized missiles and explosives that can automatically engage enemies at ranges that are much farther than what traditional firearms can reach. Talking about firearms, another cool part about the Marine exoskeleton is that the fire is literally in their arms in the form of a Gatling gun. It makes sense that when you are wearing such a thick suit of armor that the weapons would be more accessible and easier to use. The recoil of a Gatling gun on your arm could be supported by the suit and the aiming reticle can be beamed straight to the helmets. This type of weapon can also be useful in a CQC situation where you can literally point your hand around a corner and use the camera to see what's going on without exposing your entire body. It's really good to also have hands free while you're firing at people in case you want to do other things. And weapons retention is not a problem unless your enemy has a lightsaber. Or is John Wick? Or is John Wick with a lightsaber? Why is that not a thing, Cyberpunk 2077? or have the magical walls that protect our realities from merging into one crazy reality finally have broken down because of the tidal wave of nonsense that is 2020. Hashtag draft Keanu for president. Now, one type of combat scenario that we will be encountering more when we become a spacefaring species is interdiction uh, situations. This is when one force tries to board another force in order to subdue the crew and take control of that ship. In the expanse, these types of operations are incredibly dangerous. A group of boarders are positioned inside of a tiny cramped pod and literally shot out like a projectile on an interception course with another ship. In the case of the OPA, they're literally putting thrusters on a shipping container and then just sending them out. The problem, of course, is when you put humans in a projectile, you really have to limit the Gs you're pulling, otherwise you're gonna knock everyone out or kill them with mass deceleration. And mass deceleration is exactly what happens when the pod slams into the side of your target vessel. These containers were far too small to have any defensive measures on board and were easy prey for point defense weapons and even anti-collision turrets that are designed to protect ships from asteroids. And because these pods had to turn and burn right before they landed, they are especially vulnerable when approaching an enemy vessel. Now, interestingly enough, when it comes to CQC battles, during shipboarding, most humans have sort of agreed to limit the power of their munitions to small arms that cannot penetrate multiple deck layers of a ship. In a breaching situation, usually the attackers don't see blowing up the enemy ship as a viable tactic. That's why they're boarding it in the first place. What is interesting here is that while light armor used by most Marines are vulnerable to small arms fire, a full-on recon Marine, whether it's a UN one or Bobby the Brick House Draper, has access to that upgraded armor, which is basically invulnerable to any bullets. The only way you're going to be able to take down an exoskeleton marine inside of a ship is by venting them into space or electrifying them. Interestingly enough, there is a complete absence of armored vehicles and larger mechanical walkers in the Expanse. Well, at least in the Expanse TV show. Most armored vehicles were built around two principles. One is to create protective mobile deployment vehicles for infantry, and two is to develop a vehicle powerful enough to mobilize larger weapon systems. When we take a look at a Force Recon Marine with their Gatling guns, RPGs, and thick armor systems, we have essentially everything rolled up into one neat package. Plus, in long-range warfare where guided munitions are used, a large box that emits all sorts of, you know, uh, heat and, and radiation and maybe radio signals is a really easy target. No amount of armor will be able to protect against the ever-increasing power of offensive weapons. It's also pretty expensive to ship gigantic vehicles across the solar system. I mean, space travel is still pretty primitive, and every inch of space on a ship is still quite important. The heavy exoskeletons that we see in the show basically replace the need for heavy armor. Combined with ships and satellites in orbit that can provide supporting fire, there's really not that many reasons why we would need heavy vehicles on the battlefield anymore. So there you have it guys, that is a run through of the ground combat that we've seen in The Expanse. Now, if you guys haven't seen The Expanse, if you've watched this entire video and you still are interested, you really should check out The Expanse one way or another. It is on like, I believe Amazon Prime. We're definitely not sponsored by the show, but we appreciate what the show represents, which is really high quality science fiction. And uh, just like Serenity and Firefly before, it's, it's nice to see this kind of quality in our favorite genre. 
Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content somewhere down below, probably. Also, my name is Alan, and I'm reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.